Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Explain what OPML is. I don't even know what it is. I've heard of it. Well, Kevin, uh, you're not unlike many people out there. They may have heard of OPML, specifically when it comes to organizing RSS feeds or your favorite subscriptions from around the blogosphere or the news sphere in general, if I can use that as a word. Uh, OPML stands for Outline Processor Markup Language, and Drake Steele just pasted a, a full description in there from Wikipedia. Thank you, but I don't know if the uh, chat and video is going to catch all of that. Uh, thank you for the link, Shadowfire. Uh, essentially, OPML is an XML document. It's a type of XML document that was designed to help you organize data in an outline fashion. So you remember in grade school, well, at least I remember in grade school, having to write out outlines, you know, it'd start with a, a Roman numeral and then a capital A and then one, two, three, and then lowercase letters. And it's, think of it in much the same way, only in a document format and fashion. So why does OPML exist? Well, it's data, it's smart data that could be transferred back and forth between any application that understands what the OPML file is. So as is the case of most news aggregators or um, programs that allow you to read RSS or Atom feeds, uh, they understand that you can take your subscriptions from one computer or one account to another, and they use OPML as a way to organize those feeds. So if you've already categorized them uh, in, in a certain fashion in one news aggregator, you can export that same hierarchy and import it into a new news aggregator. So OPML is an outline format that's specifically written in the XML language, or for a specifically for applications that understand how to parse XML or how to render it and make it usable in some fashion. So Marshall Kirkpatrick asked me just the other day about... Yes, this is Marshall. I wanted to ask you a question about editing OPML files. What do you think is the easiest way to do it? Okay, so his audio is not all that great, and I'm sure it doesn't sound any better because I have it coming out of my speakers into the microphone. Marshall from Splashcast, and if you haven't heard of Splashcast, give it a shot. We're actually using uh, Splashcast video. It's like a, a video aggregator that works within a, a single Flash widget. Um, we're using it on the Gnomedex website, which is exactly where I'm going to take you to right now, our conference that Ponzi puts together. I, I play a very small role in Gnome Dex. Ponzi is the brains and brawn behind it. Uh, this happens to be our conference. The next one's coming up here in the Seattle area, uh, August 9th through 11th here in 2007. We do one every year. And on the front page, if you scroll down, you'll see it looks like a, a small version of your news aggregator. We've got it running in line within gnomedex.com. And if someone wants to paste a link inside the uh, chat window, we'll capture it for the video. This is an aggregation, a collection of all the people that have registered to come to my conference. This is an OPML file. Now you're looking at it going, how's this an OPML file? Ah, this is a Grazer widget, a, a pay, a, an embeddable widget that I have on the web page that's taking the OPML file, this organization of all, everybody who has decided they're coming to my conference, they put their RSS feed into the registration form. It's then put into automatically an OPML file, and then I use this free Grazer widget to render that OPML file so that people can actually use the information that the OPML file has. That's the beauty of OPML. It makes it easier to transfer uh, information back and forth between various services. Well, in this specific case, OPML is being used to help organize RSS feeds, and then the Grazer widget takes that OPML file and makes it usable for a lot of people. If you go to the Gnome Dex site, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's so wonderful to have all the people who are coming to my conference linked right here and automatically organized. It takes their RSS feed, renders it in line, and then you could read their blogs right here without having to visit everybody's site. That's part of the beauty of RSS. And then the beauty of OPML is that it organizes all those RSS feeds. In terms of editing OPML, now, if you're not brave like I am, I use PSPAD, which happens to be a free text editor that's available at PSPAD.com. You can use Notepad for, for that matter. I have really yet to find uh, an OPML editor that is uh, not only powerful, 
but is also easy for people to use. Dave Weiner uh, has created the OPML editor, and I'm not sure. I haven't heard much about it lately, um, but I was really hoping that it would really take off because it shows people the power of organizing information in XML and makes it easily accessible and then specifically translatable through widgets like Grazer that can take RSS and OPML and make them accessible. That's the bottom line. Um, Marshall said that he used Dave's editor and he said that he found it a little confusing, a little daunting. Um, the only other OPML editor that I've found is no longer being developed. It was called Syndication Studio and I've tried to get a hold of the guy and he's not responding to my emails. It was amazing. It was a nice Windows editor for RSS and OPML. Um, any XML editor will work for OPML too. Thank you, Jimura. Uh, the other one that I just found is at buzz, that's, you know, like buzz, bzz, dot sf dot net. And of course, you know, when I mention sf dot net, I'm talking about SourceForge or the world's ultimate repository for all things open source. And buzz is an open source OPML editor that should run cross platform for you. I don't know if you're going to find it any more usable than Dave Weiner's uh, OPML editor, but this one, the buzz OPML editor, has icons, so I suppose that makes it a little more user friendly in, in, in some ways. Um, you know, for the most part, most people are never going to ever look at editing an OPML file. Um, they're just going to want to use them, and in many cases, just export OPML from your news aggregator look at it in notepad or a text editor and you'll see you'll start to understand a little more about how all this data becomes organized and you know this is how you learn how to uh, you know work inside this world of technology you make it a lot less strange when you open things up and you view the source and you look at how things come together you'll learn a lot just by diving in that way and as long as you're curious you know I think you'll go pretty far so there's a couple of suggestions specifically for you Marshall this buzz OPML editor again at buzz.sf.net. Does anybody else know of any other uses of OPML other than for news aggregators? I haven't really seen too many applications in general, not to say that they don't exist, but if you know of one, by all means, let me know. I'd be interested in finding out just because I, oh, this is this is what's fun to me is, is knowing where information's going and organizing an information and making it easier and more accessible for everybody.